hey welcome back everyone let's uh, resume from where we uh, stopped in part 1 uh, please refer to previous video if you if you have missed so so you can link it you're going to use to be able to walk through an AI evaluation. So let's go down to prompt number one. So I think it's really important to set up any AI tool with its right frame of mind, what role is it playing, make sure that it's familiar to understands what it's going to be evaluating. So that's what these first two prompts are. So we'll take prompt number one, are you familiar with the IELTS general letter task one? And I just want to make sure that it's familiar with it and we're going to place that into ChatGPT. And so I'm checking over the information just to make sure that it is giving me its understanding of general task number one, and I can see that it understands. And give it the right frame of mind. I'm telling it the examiner. And it should tell me, yes, I've read through the rubric. I understand it. So now we're ready. So now I'm going to have it. So here is the prompt number three. I'm telling it that you are a strict IELTS examiner. I want you to evaluate this writer's response. So let's go ahead and put this information in there now. So when we put this information into ChatGPT, there's some blanks I have to fill in, so do not press the green button. I have to put in the question, I have to put in how many mistakes I see, I have to put in the amount of words, and I have to put in the response. So I have to fill in those blank spaces. Question. We're gonna put that in right here where it says put in the question. All right. Then I have to put in the amount of mistakes. I said it's closer to 25, I believe, not 19, because some other mistakes it doesn't see. This document is only 140 words, so it would lose points because it is under the word minimum. And then I need to put in the response. And we're going to put that in now right here. And then I'm going to ask it to do its evaluation. And so it's really going through and letting in each area, really going through and informing on what score it would give. So it says it would give a score of 5.5. I think that's off, right? I would say probably this one is probably closer to a 4.5, maybe a 5, but closer to a 4.5 or 5. So like I said, the scoring is not always exactly what it should be. But what you want more than anything else is the feedback on why your score is lower, right? And then you want to be able to go and make those types of corrections. Now, there's one more step we're going to do. And... I want the AI tool to give a complete, a complete breakdown of the writing. I want it to try to find every single mistake. So I have another prompt, which is evaluation two. And I'm telling it I want even more feedback on this IELTS task one. And I'm going to give it 18 criteria that I want it to look at. Right? So this is a lot, actually more criteria. I think we're at 21 criteria, 22 criteria. And so I wanted to evaluate and look at this writing in all of these different areas. Right? So this is going to be able to give you more feedback than you ever could want. Right? More feedback than you could ever want. So it's looking at each one of these criteria. And it, it did a good job. In criteria one, it said the writing was closer to a B1, which is really accurate. It's probably like a B1. All right, so it went through the first seven. And then, you know, it's asking me, do I want it to, to continue? <coughs> so look, it's going through, it's going through all of this information. For example, in, in criteria 21, it's telling me how many words or phrases are used more than once. The word rooms repeated seven times, difficult repeated three times. So this is telling you that you need to use more paraphrasing and synonyms, but it walks through all the different criteria, right? All this criteria of evaluation. So you're able to really get back a lot of helpful information. And then there's one more prompt we want to use. And that last prompt is prompt number four. Please list all the ways this essay could be upgraded or improved. Right, so it's, it's really going through and listing all the ways you can improve. So you're able to get so much feedback, more feedback than you can ever ask for, that you can use and improve your writing. Okay, so now I'm going to do the same thing and just run through a scoring with Google Bard. I'm going to do it very, very quickly, so I'm not going to speak or talk, okay, because I'm, I'm going to run through it really, really quickly. So just watch the screen and watch what I do. So there won't be any talking right now because I'm just going to walk through the evaluation very, very quickly on Google Bard. All right?
point out to you is Google Bard actually gave a more accurate band score of this writing, right? Google Bard said, here it is right here at the bottom, band score. Based on the criteria in the rubric, I would approximate a band score of four for this response. A band score of four. So this is much closer to what I would actually rate this would be a four. So Google Bard and ChatGPT both do a pretty good job. Sometimes ChatGPT is more accurate than Google Bard. Sometimes Google Bard is more accurate than ChatGPT. But it's a great way for you to get that feedback that you're looking for, everybody. You can get the feedback that you're looking for. Thank you very much for joining me. I hope you have a much deeper understanding of how to use an AI tool to help you self-evaluate and self-improve. Okay, everybody. Um, now we are going into a live example. So um, if you don't hear me talking as much on this live example, it's because I'm actually writing, okay? And so I'll, I'll talk when I'm able to talk, but I want to write a letter live so that I want, to write, I want to write the letter live so that you're able to really see live action writing and see, see a letter as it's being developed part by part, okay? So that's the purpose of this, okay? It's being written live. It's not being, written, it's not being stopped and explained. I did that already. And I gave you five examples, stopping and explaining each part. This is a live letter. There won't be a lot of talking, but the purpose of it is just to show you the progression from part to part to part, okay? All right, so here we go. Um, the letter says... Uh, write a letter to your friend about your plans to go out with him or her and another friend on a small picnic. Include the following in your letter, where you plan to go, what arrangements you already made, what help you need from your friend with this picnic. So, of course, the first thing we're going to start out with doing is doing an outline, okay? And we're going to have our different parts, our part one. Uh, I want to go to, I want to go to uh, Yellowstone National Park. And I'll, you'll, I'll probably use these outlines maybe in some of the other lectures that I'm doing as some examples maybe. Um, Yellowstone National Park, part two. Uh, I want to check the weather, uh, call the entry fee, uh, reserve place, and order the food. Now, I'm writing all these down as, as examples, but it doesn't necessarily mean I'm going to use all this information. I'm just trying to really put down some ideas that I can write about so that I don't have to try to think about these ideas while I am writing. That way I can really focus on how I want to say something and not have to really think about what I want to say, and that's going to help it to be better. All right, so there we have an outline. An outline needs to be done in less than a minute. Uh, you're going to be handwriting, um, but you should be able to get it done in less than a minute. You definitely can get it done in less than a minute if you're really practicing. All right, so this is a letter uh, to your friend, to my letter to your friend about your plans to go out with him or her and another friend on a small uh, picnic. All right, so it's a letter to my friend, okay? So let's get started and say, dear William, all right? My friend named, my friend's name William. And so we're going to start out with uh, our introduction. The time of year again. Our annual get together. So all right, so look at our opening sentence. Hey Will. It's that time of year again when we have our annual get together, and this year we've decided on a traditional American picnic, so we need to discuss our program, right? Our plans, our program. That's an introduction for you. You see the language is informal. Now I need to go into this next part about where, where we're going to go. Where, where's the plan to go? I guess we need to first think about where the picnic should take place. And there's so many options, including, I'm writing this live, so I'm having to correct some mistakes as I go, but not limited to the beach, mountains, or desert. Right, I gotta be careful to write desert and not desert there. Okay, there's our opening sentence about where we wanna go. That's the first thing we have to think about, is where we want to go. Luckily, Paul Riley has all these locations, but since it's my turn to decide this year, comma, I feel that we should picnic in beautiful, beautifully famous Yellowstone Park. All right, so there we have our, 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 part of our sentence, sentence about 
where we're going to uh, have our picnic, right? The location. And here we have two sentences. Remember, it could be two to three sentences, okay? Moving on to other matters, right? That's good coherence language there. And you see the contractions. Contractions. Uh oh. All right, so there we see our, a good opening sentence for our next part about the arrangements that I've already made, right? You get the idea from that topic sentence about the arrangements that have already been made. Let's see. Let's see I'm going to talk about the weather. I've checked the weather. And I also call the part. When I'm typing too, I always type O before T. I don't know why I do that. I need to fix my fingers. Also, I made a reservation for a sweet spot, colloquial language, next to the canyon. and ordered Lebanese food. I like Lebanese food. Okay, all right, there's our second part about the arrangements I've made. Now this one has three sentences, the previous one had two sentences, right? But you see the, the, the amount of words are about the same. All right, so now we are moving into um, our next part, which is what help do I need from my friend and the other guy, the other guy about what other help do I need. Having done my part, I just need a little bit, look at the relaxed language, the tone, a little bit of extra help from my partners, right? So, William, please ask your wife, your lovely wife, let's use a good adverb there, if we can borrow her checkered blankets to give that authentic feel, right? Martin. Now, Martin is the other guy. Uh -oh. Martin needs to do a bit more and bring along the drinks. Here we go, some parallelism, bring along the drinks. Have the music prepared and Help me drive out to the park. Yep, we are making him do a lot of work. All right, then we finish that paragraph, and then we have our conclusion. Okay, that's it, right? Contraction. We all know the plan of action, exclamation point. See you guys soon. All the best in formal language. Big Mike. Big Mike is writing again. Okay, so there we have it, everybody. We have an informal letter written from beginning to end, right? Written from beginning to end. And as you see again, we have all the parts. We have all the necessary parts to be able to write a really solid letter, right? If we look at our letter, see how many words do we have here? 210, right? 210 words, right? I don't know if they count the Dear William or not. I don't think they do. 210, all right? So um, this is an example of how you should write a letter from beginning to end. This is an informal letter. And I just want to kind of take you through it from beginning to end to show you how we go part by part by part by part. This is how you have to write, everybody. So I hope this live example was very helpful for you. Talk to you soon. Okay, everybody. We are now going to go through our second uh, live example. And for this second live example, we're going to be looking at a semi-formal letter because we're writing a letter to a manager, it looks like. So um, as I said in the previous lecture, I'm going to be writing this live, so I'm not going to be able to necessarily be talking all the time. I know some people say, well, why aren't you talking more? Stop and explain, please. I, I stopped and explained in section two of this lecture series, right? This is about me writing something live so you can witness and see progression step by step by step. When I'm able to talk um, and stop and talk and explain, I will, but I'm trying to move through it and, and finish in a timely fashion uh, and give you the ability to really see the parts happening live. 
because that's what you need to be able to do on paper. Okay? So uh, let's get started. It says here that you have seen an advertisement of a valuable piece of equipment. Write a letter to your manager and ask to buy that product to be used in your company. Include the following in your letter, what the equipment is, how it can be useful for the company, and describe the procedure for buying the equipment. So the first step that we have to do, as always, is to do an outline. You've seen from all the examples that I've done so far, every, every example that I've done so far, you've seen it happen the exact same way. All right? It doesn't matter what type of letter it is. It's the same strategy, okay? It's the same, no, I shouldn't say the same strategy because language changes whether it's formal or informal. It's the same structure and organization, let's put it that way, all right? So uh, let's go ahead and get started, and we're going to get started with doing an outline. In my outline, I need to address these three parts, what the equipment is, how it can be useful, and describe the procedure for buying. All right, so we have our outline, part one. Uh, we're going to buy an all-inclusive recording booth. How about that? One thing that I recommend you do, write about what you know, right? If you're a software engineer, buy software equipment. If you are a uh, nurse, buy some nursing equipment. If you're a dentist, buy dental equipment, right? So if you're a social worker, buy some pens and pencils, I guess. I don't, I don't know, but buy, buy, buy equipment that you know, okay? Write about what you know. Part two. Oh, shoot. I shouldn't be up there. How can it be useful? Record lessons, online courses. Remember, a lot of the ideas I'm thinking about, I may not actually use all those ideas, but I'm just trying to get things out of my head so I can focus on uh, how I want to write. If you use online order form, provide dimensions, that's spelled wrong. Although in a really, in an outline, it doesn't really matter, but choose color palette. Is that spelled right? Yeah. All right, so I've done an outline. I think doing an outline is really, really helpful. Okay, and we're gonna write this to our manager, dear Mr. Campbell. Uh, let me go ahead and minimize that. In. All right, so dear Mr. Campbell, it's, since it's a manager, since it's a manager, it's okay to use their last name. You wouldn't say dear sir, madam, right? It's semi-formal. So it would be dear Mr. Campbell, dear Mrs. Williams, dear, um, dear whatever you want to put it as, okay? And we're gonna start out with our introduction, okay? should consider. All right, there we have a very, very good compound complex sentence. We have a very good sentence there that um, is going to really impress the grader, right? Really impress the grader a lot. Okay. Um, as the manager of our department, you previously requested we bring to your attention any great ideas to improve our capabilities, and I've come across some equipment we should consider. Okay. Next, I have to talk about what the equipment is. Maybe you discussed, maybe we discussed. All right now, if you notice I said this equipment fits the bill, that's more colloquial language, but it's okay here. I don't want to do it too much, but it's okay here because this is a semi formal letter. If this were a formal, really formal letter, I wouldn't put something like fits the bill. I want to say it is. I don't want to say it's. Right. In addition, I'm going to build attachments for microphone, sound buffer, and document holder. All right, so there I've kind of described the equipment, what the equipment is. All right, and then we have to move on to the next part about how it can be useful for the company. The usefulness for our company is undeniable. He now gets the controlling idea of what this next paragraph is going to be about and going to discuss. We 
will be able to properly equally important. enable us to enter the online course market since we can do all of our recordings in-house to the required standard of production. What do you think so far? Do you think I'm convincing my manager? Right? It's a semi-formal letter, right? That should be to our, all right? And then we have to write about uh, the next part, which is uh, describe the procedure, describe the procedure for buying the equipment. All right, again, um, you're seeing a short topic sentence here to kind of introduce where we're moving on to. All right, you have to take somebody's hand and you have to walk them through where you're going. You have to take them in the direction that you want them to go. You have to fill out the basic online order form. Now, the good thing is that I already have my outline, so I don't have to think about what I need to do. We need to provide the booth dimensions needed and the color palette for the outside. All right, there's our next letter. All right, and then we're missing what, guys? We just need our conclusion. I really hope we can move quickly. Again, this is a semi-formal. If, if this were a formal letter, I would probably say we should, right? We should, so semi-formal. I hope you're getting the idea of, of the tone. Right, and there we have it. We're going to give them our old best regards from good old best regards from Kevin Smith. Right, and we're going to give Kevin actually a title. It's not necessary. I A S. Uh oh. I A S. That's what happens. When, that's what happens when you're writing live. You make mistakes. All right, so there we have our letter, everybody. All right, and our word count. Let's just do it all of it. 213, right? We have a solid letter. And what really helped me to be able to write it so quickly and write it, write it so quickly is that I had an outline in front of me and that outline enabled me to just write and keep going and know what the idea is and focus on how I want to say it, okay? So I hope you enjoy that. And we have one more live writing uh, for a formal letter, uh, formal letter that I will kind of go live through and show you how to do. So I hope this is working out well for you. I want you to really study hard, work hard, do your best, work on your application of theory, okay? I'll talk to you soon in the next lecture. Okay, everybody, we are now going to move into our final live recording. Uh, this final live recording will be for a formal letter. Um, again, not that. Okay, everybody, we are now going to go through the.
from good old and not that I like to repeat myself, but I need to let everybody know that uh, I'm writing this live. And so what that means is there may not be a lot of talking because I'm trying to demonstrate for you the process of writing a letter from beginning to end, the process. So I'm not gonna be able to write and stop and explain and write and stop and explain because I'm going from beginning to end. In section two um, of these lectures where you have the uh, practice questions that were already written and that I walked you through the application of theory, that's where you had a lot of walking through and explaining. This is about showing you a live progress and procession, okay? So let's please understand what's happening so you can completely understand, all right? so. Let's get started, and we're going to write this live lecture. I, um, we're going to, uh, I hope that it benefits you to be able to see the process of writing from beginning to end so that you can duplicate and try to mimic this procedure. All right, so our question, our question says, I guess let's get the, uh, let's get the, size right so we can see well. Our question says, you did a bus tour with other people. However, you were not satisfied with the bus service. Write a letter to the bus company about your journey and say what the problem with the tour was, why you were not satisfied, suggest how the bus company can improve. Okay? So we first, of course, do an outline, everybody. I know I've said it many times. And I'll say it again, do a outline. Part one, what the problem is. Let's talk about air conditioning. Let's talk about poor English. And let's talk about fast driving. Those are my problems I'm going to want to talk about. All right, and then we also have, what are some other things I want to talk about for part number two? All right, why was I not satisfied? I needed uh, information. Okay, uh, and the brochure claims. And part three, this is part two. Part three, solutions. Test for English. Uh, and let's say, let's pre test the bus conditions. All right, so there we have our outline. You want to be able to write out a quick outline. Writing out a quick outline is going to really, really help you in terms of having organized thoughts, structured thoughts, so you can focus on how to write. So after that, we do our outline, we're ready, we know what we're gonna talk about, we know the order of our talking, we know the progression, we can move right into our complaint letter, All right? to the bus trip recently took with your professionally recognized bus company. Right, that's my introduction sentence. Now, if you notice, I'm not talking about part number one. I'm not talking about the problems. I'm not talking about why I wasn't satisfied. I'm not talking about my solutions that are suggested, right? I'm not talking about that. That doesn't belong here. They were only talking about our introduction sentence. Now I go into part number one.
right? So you get the idea from his opening sentence that I'm about to talk about the problems I had, the problems with the tour, right? I have an introductory topic sentence that, uh, that's going to lay it all out. So good, like we can't. We could say driver, but conductor is a better word. Right. There is our first part. We talked about the problems. Look at the sentence structures, everybody. Look at the use of look at my use of adverbs. Okay. That's what you want to be able to look at. Okay. We see three strong sentences. Right? Look at the level look at the level of the language being used. All right. Say spoke, use broken English. This time I'm indenting uh, my paragraphs, and actually people ask me sometimes, "Can you, do I have to indent or do I do I have to? Is it necessary?" You just have to be consistent with a letter. Sometimes you can indent a letter, and sometimes you can just not indent a letter. So that's that's something that is an option. The next part we have to talk about is why I was not satisfied. Now, here I'm going to use I was, because really I have to say, like, why I was not satisfied. So some people might say, well, you're using I. Well, yeah, I mean, this, this letter, the way it's structured, I have to use I at some point because I'm talking about my personal dissatisfaction. Okay.
However, look at my sentence structure, everybody. Right, so there's our first sentence about, about needing that information for research purposes and the driver's poor English preventing that from happening. Okay, and then we're going to talk about our next idea, which is about the brochure. Okay, and there we have our next paragraph. We have three strong sentences, right? Three strong sentences, okay? We have our part two that talked about why, why I'm not satisfied. Then, everybody, we move into our part three about suggestions. Actually, I think this comma, if I'm doing it right, it goes there. I need to check on that. Okay. There are three recommendations that your bus company. Now, if you see here in this sentence, I didn't say I think you should make three recommendations. It's a formal letter, so it's strong. Not I believe or I think you should make three recommendations. There are, right? There are three things you should do. Let's use good language. Right, let's see some good language here. So that's my first solution to use a recognized English test. Now, you notice how when I'm writing, you might see me start with some simple language, but then I remember this is a formal letter. I need to up the level of vocabulary, right? I need to up and show the ability with the vocabulary. Use some good connecting language here. Some good coherence language. Should pretest the
pre-test the air conditioning. And the HR, Department should place a speed limit reminder for the drivers. Right there, we have our next part. Okay. And now we need one more thing, and we need our conclusion. And then we need our conclusion. We our conclusion, and we need our sign off. Bob Williams. All right. So let's look. Look. Let's take a look at our our language, our word count. We're at two twenty four. Right. So that's what a formal letter looks like. That was a live letter. There are probably some things I might change here and there, but when you're doing a live letter, that's what you want, that's what you, that this is how it is. You have to go through it in a live session, one take, okay? But I hope that you really, really got the idea of what you need to do to do a great job on the IELTS general letter. Thank you so much for joining me in going through these lectures. I hope you know now what to do. I'm going to set up a couple of test questions uh, for you guys to practice with and um, submit for other students to take a look at. So um, I'll set that up for you. But at any rate, uh, thanks a lot for participating. And um, I look forward to helping you on your journey for your getting a super high IELTS score. So take care and I'll talk to you soon. Okay everybody, um, in this lecture video, what we're gonna be doing is taking a look at a general letter by a student and then you'll be able to see how I edited it, how I made edits to the letter to make corrections and improve the band score and then you can look at the revised changes. So I've already taken a look at the letter and edited it. But here you can read what the letter is about in terms of what the student is supposed to cover. And so then after that, you can actually read the letter that the student made. This is the student's original draft of the letter. And then after that, you can see the, um, all the, <laughs> you see all that red in the letter. So I guess those are my questions about what he did and what I think he should have done to improve it. Um, in this one, the student really wasn't really giving a controlling idea of what each body paragraph was about. Um, and there were just many other things that needed to be done to really correct the letter um, or, or to make it better. And so these were my initial suggestions to the student about what he needed to do to really correct the letter and improve the letter. And um, you know, you can stop the video here if you want to. You can stop the video here if you want to actually read through it line by line and see what I did. And then um, after that, we moved down and you can see the changes that I made after, right? You see the changes that I made. So these are the changes that I made from the, um, from the student's original letter, then my red line edits, and then the finalized version of what I would consider to be an upgraded general letter that will receive an extremely high band score. Okay, so again, the way it's starting out is we have the student's original general letter. Okay, that's the student's original general letter. Then we have all of my edits and suggestions to the mistakes or problems and what have been done to improve the letter even better. Okay, and then after that, we move down into the uh, revised letter with the changes. And you can really see the difference in terms of the language that's been being used, um, the adverbs that are being Okay, everybody, in this um, video, we're going to take a look at another general letter by a student. And this is a letter that a student did in the original letter, edited version. Uh, 
look at this one. Okay, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you're located. As you know, this class is a global. I can tell where you're from, class for July 2020. And six or 6.5, they're stuck at a 6.5 or a six or a 5.5, and they don't know how to move up into a seven. I'm going to talk about that briefly. I'll go over some of the, in terms of the rubric, in terms of the score differences. And then we'll go over outlining a letter, introductions on a letter, and discussion points on a letter. And, um, and then throughout that process, I'll be looking at some of the student introductions for those different aspects. We're going to start off by going over uh, the basics of task number one. The reason why I'm going over the general basics of task number one is because I have students that are at different levels within my class. Some people have never done IELTS exam before. Some people have taken IELTS exam, unfortunately, six or seven times. So they're practically experts at the, at the basics. But I have to cover for everybody, for every possible situation if I can. So first, we're going to start off with the basics of task number one. So when we're talking about task number one, you have to be able to separate your paragraphs. I'm going to teach you and go over with you today about how to analyze, outline, and write the letter with a minimum of 150 words written in under 20 minutes. The organization and separation of this information in the paragraphs, in the proper paragraphs, is really, really important. One of the best things you can do with a general letter is when you're starting out, when you're starting out with a general letter, the best thing you can do is to do an outline. Do an outline. Take one to two minutes and do an outline for each discussion point. You want to make sure that you note each discussion point. And then after you do an outline, you want to do an introduction. You want to explain why you're writing this letter. Do not mix the discussion points into the introduction. The introduction is one sentence by itself. And then normally, you're going to have three discussion points. Normally, there are three different points they want you to talk about. Each one of those discussion points gets their own paragraph. So in terms of the process, right, you outline, you write the introduction, and then you write a, a paragraph for each discussion point. That's proper structure. Um, somebody just mentioned, somebody named Rain, just mentioned that Rain is in Hong Kong, um, that they can't hear me. Can, can you hear me? Can everybody hear me just fine? Because it's a problem for everybody else. Um, if I'm doing all this talk, let's keep going. Thank you very much. Letter. This is just some, some, again, basic information. With a general letter, you're doing descriptive writing and you're doing narrative writing. You're doing both of those, descriptive writing and narrative writing. In, in writing a letter, you have to be very, you have to really describe what you're talking about. You have to really describe your ideas of what you're talking about for each discussion point. In addition to that, you're doing a type of narrative writing. You're telling a story, basically. Whether it is informal, semi-formal, or informal, it is narrative writing and it is descriptive writing. So the more descriptive you're writing, the better you're going to score. The more visual it is, the more sensory it is. Descriptive verbs and adjectives, those really help the score. And then narrative writing. When you're telling a story, when you're telling a story, all the parts fit together. All the parts fit together. So, uh, one second, Aditya or Aditya, I'm teaching the general letter. So what I'm talking about does not relate to the academic. If, if I were teaching an academic class, I would not be talking about descriptive and, and narrative writing. Okay, this is, so we don't 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 mix things together. Okay, the, the general letter is a general letter. I wouldn't if I. I've never mentioned this in an academic writing class, so I, it does not apply. Keep in mind, be descriptive, be narrative. And of course, everybody knows that there are three types of letters, formal, semi-formal, and informal. Let me say something really quickly about the formal, the formal and semi-formal. For the formal and semi-formal, the semi there, there really is no difference in terms of the language. There's no difference in terms of the, of the language. A formal, a formal letter is where you're writing to a city council or to a store or to a government office. Right? You don't know who, you're not writing to a specific person. That's how you understand when something is a formal letter. A semi-formal letter is where, is where you're talking to the manager of a place or your boss, right? Or the or or an, an administrator. That's really the main difference between formal and semi-formal. There's no real difference in terms of the language that you would use. Okay, so um, some people think that they are completely different, and the real difference is one of them you're writing to a specific person, the other one you're writing to just an entity. That's the best way to understand that. So, okay, before I keep going, I'm going to mention one more time. Please keep your microphone off. Keep your microphone off. If you can't keep your microphone off, I am going to have to put you out the class, and I don't want to do that because I'm trying to record the class. So. If you see me turn off your microphone, that's me doing it. Please keep it off. Okay. Um, how to move your score from a band seven to a band nine. This type of information, this type of information is information that applies to the general letter and that applies to the academic task one. Uh, you want to have seamless cohesion. A lot of times students rely on words like first, second, third, more, furthermore. Those are basic level transition words. And a lot of students mess up their score because they, they overuse those words, right? Every other sentence or every sentence is first, second, third. You know, it's, it's, it becomes very robotic, very clunky. When you write that way, that's one of the things that's keeping you in a score of a six to 6.5. You have, to use, you have to learn how to use language, language 
that builds cohesion. And a lot of times that's done with reference pronouns and other types of language that makes the cohesion be seamless. We've talked about segregating your paragraphs properly. We're going to go over that. And then you want to make sure that you're able to change word form, paraphrase, and use synonyms. The more of that that you do, the better chance you have of moving from a seven to a nine. In addition, you want to make sure that if you want to get a score of seven to nine, that the majority of your sentences are mistake-free sentences. This is a big, big mistake that I see in letters. I've seen people write letters before, and the organization is very well, is very well done. Um, they have enough sentences in each paragraph. They have great information. But then they have a grammar or word mistake in, in almost every sentence. And when you do that, when you do that, it's very easy for an examiner to just put you in a 6 or 6.5 because you're not able to really write the majority of your sentences to be mistake-free. Um, you want to make sure that you show grammatical range. Just because, you, just because you write a letter does not mean you're allowed to write just simple sentences. They are grading you. Remember that. They're grading you. If, just, just think about it. If you were able to write all simple sentences and use simple basic vocabulary, if that was good enough to get you a 7, 8, or 9, there'd be no difference. We, we can't differentiate one student from the other student. Right? That's why there's a rubric. That's why there's a rubric. And you want to make sure that when you're writing a letter, you have a very clear purpose, and your letter is fully developed, fully, fully developed. It shouldn't be where the first discussion point is one sentence, the second discussion point is three sentences, and the third discussion point is one sentence. That's not being fully developed. Right? And then when it talks about having clear purpose, they're talking about for the discussion point, is the purpose of that paragraph clear? Now, when we're talking about the rubric, you have to be able to notice the differences. The differences is what they're talking about. A lot of students say, well, I'm stuck in a six. Like my coherence is a six, or my task achievement is a six. And you have to be able to, be able to know what does that mean? What does that mean? So for example, with task achievement, for a six, it says presents a purpose that is generally clear. There may be inconsistencies in tone. Move up to a seven, presents a clear purpose. Clear purpose, not generally clear, a clear purpose with the, with the tone consistent and appropriate. Right? So you have to be able, when you're talking about differences in scores, you're talking about how well you do something according to the rubric. How well you do something according to the rubric. And then it's the same thing in terms of looking at coherence. We're looking at the same thing. There are differences between six, seven, eights, and nines. The examiners have a chart like this. And in fact, the examiner chart has more detail. This is the public chart that they give you. The examiner's chart has even more detail to help them put you into different categories. We can see the same thing when it comes to lexical resource and grammar. If you are using simple sentences and complex sentences and making some mistakes, that's what gets you down into a six for your grammar. If you're using a variety of sentences and frequent error-free sentences, that moves you up to a seven. Now, we're talking, talking about eight. It means the majority of your sentences are error-free. Examiners love error-free sentences. Examiners love seeing a range of vocabulary. So it's important to understand how you move up in the, in the rubric. Okay, so coming up next, we're going to look at the process of outlining a general letter. How do you construct the outline and analyze it? So, writing an outline. What must you do to write a proper outline? Let's write an outline for this letter. We're going to write the outline under timed conditions. Under timed conditions. So, when you're outlining, these are some things to keep in mind. Number one, why do you do an outline? It allows you to write faster and build better organization. I think outlining is, is, is one of the most important things you can do, whether you're writing a general letter or you're writing task number two. Because outlining allows you to focus on how to say something and not what to say. When you're focused on how to say an idea or how to express an idea, that allows you to be able to focus on the sentence types and sentence structures that you're writing. That's what gets you a better grade. When you're outlining in terms of the structure, like I said, they're going to give you different points. You have point number one, whatever it is. You're going to think of two details you're going to talk about for point number one, two details you're going to talk, you're going to, talk about for point number two, and then two details you're going to talk about for point number three. So that's the way you structure an outline. Point one, A and B, point two, A and B, point three, A and B. If you have that information, if you have that information, you can really focus on how to say something. And when you're doing an outline, it's done in one to two minutes. It's a very fast process. It's a very, very fast process. So please keep in mind this structure, point one AB, point two AB, point three AB. Keep in mind that structure because on the upcoming question, we're going to go ahead and do an outline for that question. And if you want, in the chat box, you can, you can put your outline and some of the outlines uh, I'm going to look at so all of us can benefit. Right? I'm not going to look at every single outline. There are almost 80 people in this class right now. So please don't ask me to do the impossible. It's a group class, but I will look at some of them to help us learn from each other and benefit from each other. Okay, so here is our question or our, our letter on the left-hand side. You recently visited a local restaurant with your family and had a very good meal. Write a letter to the editor of a local newspaper in your letter. Explain where the restaurant is. Describe what you ate in the restaurant. Say why you would recommend the restaurant to others. So the first thing we're going to do, the only thing we're going to do, is write an outline for this letter. All right, so we could put it in the chat box. You have two minutes. Two minutes to write your outline. Type it in the chat box now.
Okay, so let's go ahead and take a look at some of the outlines that students have done. We're going to uh, pause for a moment while I put some of these example outlines uh, in, the, in the slides so we can all look at them, okay? Okay, so let's look at some of these examples of an outline. I tried to, I tried to pull out some examples that were complete. Uh, some people did not really um, put in details in their outline. They were putting in things like uh, describe the location or talk about the location. And you want to put in details, right? You want to put in details. Now with this one, I want to point, I want to point, the reason why I chose this one is I want to point something out in terms of information that you should or should not be talking about in the different discussion points. Like her second one here is fine. She's, she's describing about what she ate, pasta, espresso, white sauce, espresso, coffee. Um, she also is pretty good in terms of uh, why she would recommend the place, the taste and relaxation. That's good. This first one is a problem. This first one is a problem. She talks about that it's near a lake, but they're not asking why, you, why, why, what you like about the location. They're not asking you about the view. They're not asking you about the, what you like about it or why it's a good location. So this will, be, this, this will be an example of writing about information on a discussion point that is incoherent. The only thing they're asking, asking you about is where it is. That's the only thing you can talk about. You can't talk about why you like it or why it's a good location. Okay? That's the reason why, that's what I'm trying to show you with this example. In this next one, this person actually does a really good job because you can look at their point number one. They're telling us that it's near the shopping mall, 10 kilometers away from the home. So they are, everything that they're going to talk about, everything that they're going to talk about is describing the location. Their point number two is, is well done. I would have mentioned a specific main course and a specific drink. Okay, specifics, remember, specifics are always better than general. Specific is better than general. When you're very specific, it shows off vocabulary range, vocabulary, vocabulary ability. When you're very general, it makes you look really basic. But this one is pretty good. I like this one a lot. This one, this one is actually really well done. A couple of more, like here. This first one, there's nothing for this first one because they just wrote restaurant location. So that's somewhat, that's somewhat, this person, this person is going to have to think about what they have to say instead of focusing on how they want to talk about the location. Chinese food, I would have one more detail here. Um, and why it's good, delicious, comfortable, convenient, that's pretty good. This next person near the beach. Okay, they're going to talk about this near the beach. Now you're going to, of course, you want to have two or three sentences in this discussion point. So remember, you can only talk about location. You cannot talk about why. It's that, you know, why the beach is nice or how beautiful the beach is. That would be incoherent. Yeah, because you're talking about ambiance. They're, they're, they're not, that's not what they're asking you. Right, and so I, the reason why I'm pointing these things out to you, everybody, is I want you to understand the kind of mistakes that are made. They keep you in a score of a 6 or 6.5. A lot of times you guys don't realize you make these mistakes. Uh, had great seafood, that's fine. General, specific is better. Spacious, and that third one is fine. Location, accessibility, this, that's, that's, that, is, that doesn't tell me anything specific for this one. Um, again, this person, when they're writing, remember, you only really have 20 minutes to write this letter. You don't want to have to think about, when, when you start thinking about what to say, you lose focus on what really matters for your score. Uh, point number two, variety of cuisine and taste. Again, that's general. Be specific. That last one is specific. Is specific. Uh, point number one, located in the main city, that's okay. Keep in mind, you have to only talk about where. So you've got to have some really good details. Right? If you get very, very, if you get, if you get very, very specific in your details, you'll be okay. Chef special, that's you're gonna have to really get descriptive with that. And the other one is fine too. All right here, here's an example of my outline. You can look at my outline, and you can see I'm going to talk about that. I'm going to talk about that it is downtown in the multicultural center. Right? I'm gonna talk about the food that I've eaten, Rewat from Morocco and Yasa from Senegal, and uh, why I recommended the place. So you can see my details. Okay, you can see my details. So when you have an outline and you're looking at an outline, you know, it really helps you in terms of just really focusing on how I want to say this. It really helps a lot in terms of doing that. Okay. So any questions? Okay, yeah, Rawa, I'm, I'm glad you solved your problem with your speakers. Okay, great. So we have a little bit better understanding of outlining and what a good outline looks like. Like I told you, you want to be, like I, like I told you, you want to be able to, um, do an outline in one to two minutes, and you want to be specific in what you're doing, okay? All right, let's move on. Now we're going to talk about writing an introduction. Writing an introduction. Construction and analysis. What must you do to write a proper introduction? Okay, we're going to write an introduction together. So when it comes to writing an introduction, number one, you want to make sure you have the correct tone. 
if it's a formal or semi-formal letter, you cannot have an informal tone. You would always start off a letter with dear sir, dear Mr. Jones, to whom it may concern. You start off like that. But throughout the writing of the introduction, you start off with the correct tone. The only purpose with an introduction, the only purpose is to state the aim. Why are you writing the letter? Why are you writing the letter? Do not mix the discussion points into the introduction. Also remember sentence variety. You've heard me say that. Don't lose sight. Don't forget that you are taking an English test. So if you do basic level writing, you're going to get a basic level score. If you do a, a, four, a, a five word simple sentence, expect to get a five word simple score, right? They are grading your level of writing that you are presenting. You must say the correct information and say it at a high enough level to score above a seven. at our introduction, right? And in, in terms of the writing that we're going to do, you know, if you have your outline, you can use your own outline or you can use my outline that I have over here on the left-hand side. But right now, everybody, what we're going to do is we're going to write the introduction. You have two minutes. You have two minutes. From them as a group. I said, I'm not just trying to pull out the best ones. I'm trying to pull out ones that are, are, are not are poorly written also. And I'll point out the problems because just, just like it's important to look at um, a well-written introduction, it's, it's, it's almost equally important to look at one that's not written correctly so that you can avoid making the same mistakes. So this one is, 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 is correct. It's sufficiently written. I'm writing this letter in reference to the restaurant that I visited last week with my family. Right? It's okay, but really this one repeats a lot of the language. It repeats a lot of the language of the question itself. So that's a problem. Right? When, I read, when I read this sentence, I don't see much difference in wording with the with the language from the, their, their description. And so that's a problem. This one is a problem also, the second one, because I'm writing this letter as I find this restaurant authentic for the city. That's fine. But then when you're talking about the various dishes showcase or traditional lifestyle, you're describing the restaurant. That's not, that's not, that should not be in the introduction. The introduction is only about why you are writing, right? And they tell you why you're writing, but you should not be describing it. I'm writing this letter to share my experience, provide recommendation for Tasty Entity, India. Period. Stop right there. Period. Stop. All this other stuff located in downtown. All right. That's that's wrong. Right. That's wrong. Okay. You're not supposed to talk about location right now. Right. You're not. And, and they're going to they're gonna drop your score for doing that kind of stuff. This this final one is fine. This is this is to bring your kind of attention to a restaurant. No problems there. That, that's a good one. Uh, this one I like this one a lot because of the, because of the vocabulary. This well-considered letter, good language, is to enlighten good language. The readers of your newspaper, I know we're writing, to, we're writing to a newspaper. Great job. With regards to good language, a marvelous meal, good language that I had in a countryside restaurant, right? That's a good, that, that, so I want you to really know the difference between the previous one that I said was good and this one that I'm saying is better, right? A lot of times people don't understand. You can write something correctly, but the level of, there are differences in level of English. I'm writing to you about my recent culinary experience that I have had at Lucky's. I'm hopeful you will show with your, share with your readers so that they're able to take, or right, there's some grammar mistakes. You know, you don't want to make grammar mistakes. Comma, so they're able to make an informed decision. Uh, dear sir, madam, I live in North Delhi. I have four members of my family. Well, what is all this? Why, why, is my, why are you describing your family? What? All right, yeah, no, no, no. No, 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 no. All right, this is not the purpose, right? If, if you were writing this, if I were reading this letter, and you wrote this stuff about who your father is and who your mother is and who your brother and sister are. What I'm going to read this. What, are you, what is this person talking about? It's nice, but the purpose of writing is not there. This letter in regards to my new visit to a local restaurant. I am surprised, happy, and interested to share, share, not with, share my experience or share the experience of my visit. That's a good one. It's not better than this first one, but it's good. Um, does anybody see the problem with this last one? This is to bring into your notice that me and my family have visited a great restaurant in our town about 10 kilometers from our home. What's, what's wrong with this last one? 
Does anybody know what's wrong with that last one? What's wrong with that last one? Location, exactly. Exactly. Talking, talking about the location does not belong. Right? Talking about the location does not belong. That's the problem. Uh, this next one, actually, I like too. I think it's a, I think it's a well-structured sentence, except for, except for he messed up. I like, I like this. Being a food, food blogger, great language. I would like to draw all your attention towards a new restaurant, a new restaurant. All of this is wrong. That is residing in the heart of the city. Like, no, you're not talking about location. I would like to draw your attention towards a new restaurant that my family and I had a great dining experience, period. I'm right to describe about my experience in the downtown area. There is a lo new local Thai restaurant. I really had a gala time with what that means. A gala time with my family. Again, we're not talking about location. So you can see, right? You guys can see that, you know, when you're writing, you can see that there are mistakes that are made that a lot of you may not recognize and understand that you are making these mistakes, right? When you write an introduction, when you write an introduction, you only write the introduction based on the purpose of why you are writing. The purpose of why you are writing, okay? All right, um, no, 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 no. You know, there's no time for doing a rewrite, right? You, you've already, you, you learned the lesson. You, you, you've learned the lesson, right? You learn what to do and what not to do, but we, this is, we have a limited time. It's, I'm not gonna do a rewrite. Um, here you can look at some of my examples of an introduction. My family and I recently dined pleasurably at the African World Eatery, a Detroit restaurant, and I would like to share the high points of our experience. Uh, I mentioned a Detroit restaurant because I'm, I'm saying that instead of saying local restaurant. Okay. Your newspaper desires feedback regarding Detroit restaurants, local restaurants. Therefore, please find below the high points of my family's dining experience at the African World Eatery. Third example, on Tuesday, July 11th, my family and I visited the African World Eatery, a Detroit grill and bar, and I wanted to share our experience at this establishment. Right. So there I gave you three different examples of my introduction. Right here, I say a deep, dear, dear Free Press editor, because I'm writing to the editor. I could also say Dear Sir or Madam. I could also put a, spe a specific name, Dear Mr. Jones, Editor-in-Chief. Right, All of those would be just fine. All right, coming up next... We are going to start writing the discussion points. We're going to start writing the discussion points. So I would like to conclude uh, the writing discussions here. I think we had uh, some more better points to, you know, go through like co cohesive writing and all. And how to demonstrate that and what what are the tips uh, for better writing so let's do it tomorrow maybe that will help us in letter writing as well as in our essay writing right so uh, for now let's wind up and uh, i will be practicing more on few more letters and i will use chat gpt for evaluating for uh, by like as we have been taught today so best of luck thank you See you tomorrow.